Welcome to this part 2 of the real-time chess game tutorial and in this part we will put the pieces on the board such as the queen or the king and it will allow us to render any future state of the game that we will have. And don't forget, I'm a small creator so subscribing doesn't cost you anything, it helps the channel grow and it also allows you to stay updated with the follow-ups, so enjoy coding now. As the next step, we want to be able to render chess pieces such as the queen, the king, the pawns on the board. Before we do, I'll move the board to its own file, simply because that's cleaner. So I'll create a utils directory, create a board TS, and then I move and export the board class. And now we can just simply import it. The next step is that I want to make sure that this one has proper types. This is an array of arrays and the inner array right now consists of zeros. Now we want to extend this. We can leave the zeros to be the empty fields. That's okay. But we want to extend it such that we can add chess pieces on the board. Let's create another class chess piece. The first one is the kind which can either be a queen, a pawn, a rook, a bishop or a king. The second property is basically the color of the piece. If it belongs to the dark pieces player or to the light pieces player. Same as with the board we could define the kind and then use the type but in fact the most convenient solution in TypeScript is to use the constructor Let's define the chess pieces kinds and the player colors in their own type. That just makes it more readable. So type chess piece kind is either pawn, queen, rook, bishop or king. And player type is either light or dark. Now we want to give the chess piece the two properties with those two new types. And we could do the same thing as with the chessboard, just define it and then set like a default. But since we will have multiple different ones, we wanna set the values when we initialize the chess piece. So we'll use this TypeScript trick with the constructor and just say public, which makes it a property, then the name, so kind, which is a chess piece kind type, and the same for the player, so public player, which is player type. And the constructor doesn't need any code here because this syntax is already defining the property on the class. So the first two rows, top to bottom, belong to the dark player. That means in the second row here, there's only gonna be dark pawns. So we can say new chess piece, this is a pawn and it's dark. Now it complains because chess piece isn't allowed. Right now we only allow zeros. So we say either chess piece or zero is allowed. Now that already works, but it would be a lot of code to write. That's why I add another function for convenience. I'll create one function, dp, which stands for dark piece. And it takes a kind, which by default is pawn because that's the most common one. And it then returns a new chess piece with the kind and dark because it's dp so dark piece and we'll do the same thing with lp for light piece and now it's much less to write because for the first one I can simply say dp and that I can do for this whole row. The same thing we can do for the second last row with lp. The pieces at the edges of a chessboard are rooks so we add a dark rook here and the dark rook here, and same for the light one. Just now see that I forgot to add the knight. All right, and next to the rooks, there are knights. Next to the knights, there are bishops, then the queen and the king. Now don't get confused, my editor just broke it into several lines. 
All right, that's looking good. Now the board contains all of the chess pieces. We need to get started. The next step is to render them. So this field now is either zero or a chess piece. Let's start by rendering just a circle everywhere where we have a piece instead of a zero. Let's go inside of the div and if the field isn't a zero, then we do conditional rendering and we'll use the class name, which we will create in a second, chess piece. Let's create that class, chess piece. It should be 70% of the size. And for now, let's just use background color red such that we see that there's actually something. Give it a little bit of radius and check it out. All right, nice first step. As we want to have the chess pieces later on centered, let's now center this circle as well. To center the circle, we give the wrapper element display flex and center. Right now, each field only has either light or dark. So let's also add a generic field class. Display flex center. So now let's add this generic field class additionally to the light or dark class. And now it's centered. Perfect. And now we need to render the correct icons. The tabler icons library has all of what we need. You can just search for chess and it's gonna show you the icons that we'll need. So yeah, let's install that one. In the terminal type npmi tabler slash icons react because we're in a react based project, but tabler is available for anything. Then we run it again. Now inside of it, we can do again conditional rendering because we have the field and now we also have the kind. So if the kind is a pawn, then let's conditionally render icon chess, which is the pawn. It's not called icon chess pawn, it's just called icon chess. And if we check it now, we should at least see small pawns on the board. Yeah, it's looking weird, but there they are. Since the icons from Tabor icons are SVGs, we can say that the SVG inside of the chess piece should get the full width of the parent. Now we want to use the filled version instead of the outline version. We want to get rid of the background color. And make it a little bit smaller. And just let's do the same conditional rendering for all the others. For the rook, we use icon chess rook field, then the knight, the bishop, the queen, and the king. That's looking good. But there's one problem. Everything's black still. Well, that we can solve with CSS. We can control the SVG fill. Let me show you. The table icons always use current color, which is the current text color. So depending if it's the light player or the dark player, we just set the text color to light or dark and it should do it. So in here, we'll just add another class. And if the player is dark, then we add classes dark player, else we add classes light player. Then define those two classes dark player, let's use color black for now, light player, color white. And now you have to acknowledge this because at any state of the chess field, whatever it might be, we can render it. That's awesome, right? In the next video, we will need to extend the board to add some logic to track who can move. So whose turn is it? Player light or player dark? How can we get the pieces to move and how can they even move? See you then.